Hi guys and welcome to Science with Sid. We are going to be looking at the periodic table and in particular atomic structure today. So welcome and enjoy. Okay, so the periodic table, you're probably wondering what is the periodic table? Now let's go back a step and have a look at Lego. So I'm going to draw here some pieces of Lego. Right, so I've got little bits of Lego over here. I went a bit wrong on this one over here, but you've got lots of different sizes of Lego. You've got big pieces of Lego, you've got small pieces of Lego, you've got blue Lego, you've got orange Lego, but all of these pieces are Lego. Now what we can do with Lego is we can put it together in lots of different ways to make different objects. So we can make a car, we can make a Lego house, we can make a Lego animal, but they all use Lego pieces. So what we're going to be doing today is looking at how these Lego pieces are able to make so many different things. OK, so have a think about this. If you take a Lego piece, you can make lots of different things with it. But essentially, the Lego piece is exactly the same. And atoms are a bit like that. OK, so we're going to use the concept of Lego to help us understand atoms and atoms are the foundation of the periodic table so we need to understand what atoms are for for starters so i'm going to draw over here what an atom looks like so an atom has lots of little bits in the middle and atoms are building building blocks of everything around us so just like lego is a building block which allows us to make lots of different things an atom allows us to also make lots of different things OK, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven over here. And you would have seen. You would have seen an atom being drawn like this. Right, so here I have got an atom and this is a, a simplistic drawing of an atom that you will have seen on lots of different science products. And what we can do is as we get these Lego pieces and we piece them together, we can also piece together lots of atom pieces. But we can't do it ourselves. But chemical reactions allow um, little atoms to join up together. And then what we get is lots of things around us. So we get the air, we get tables, we get chairs, we get you, we get me, we get the screen, we've got everything made up of atoms. So my hand is made up of atoms, my pen is um, made up of atoms, my paper is made of atoms, the air is made up of atoms. Everything around us is made up of atoms. It's like living in a world where everything is made of Lego. These are your essential little pieces but just like Lego, atoms come in lots of different sizes. So we're going to have a look at specific atoms and how they really look like and what they actually do. And the periodic table is essentially lots of different sized atoms all together, which make up an element. Right, let's have a look at one of the elements on the periodic table. So here, what we have is we've got something called hydrogen, we've got helium, we've got lithium, and got loads of other elements over here. And these dots represent that this is not the entire periodic table. So down here, we have got um, transition metals, okay? And there's loads of um, elements. So we've only shown the first 20 or so. So what we are going to do before we can look at these different types of uh, Lego bricks, because essentially the different types of Lego bricks, right, different sizes, different properties. Before we have a look at these Lego bricks, we're going to have a look at what a Lego piece actually looks like. So we've just talked about how it looks like an atom and an atom has a certain way we can draw it. But we're going to have a look at how we draw atoms in chemistry. So we're going to start off by understanding what an atom looks like and then creating an atomic structure.
Okay, so I've redrawn the atom that I drew, drew on my previous page. And what I'm going to do is to grab some colored card. So remember, we had three colored circles, three different colored circles. So I've got some paper over here, paper card, and I've got green, I've got red, and I've got blue. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to exchange the green for yellow. Let's do a yellow one. I think that's nicer. It's a bigger contrast. And what I'm going to do is to cut out some little circles so let's do that so i need a couple of little strips first of all let's grab some strips over here actually let's just cut a little square and i'm going to cut some circles So I've cut up all these little pieces um, and these are going to represent the, lot, the different types of particles that we find inside an atom. So this is the type of drawing that I did on the previous page and we had three different colours. We had a couple of them in the centre, we had a, um, two different colours in the centre and one of them around on the outside. So we're going to call these little particles different names, right? So I'm going to do a little key over here. So the first one is going to be called an electron and I'm going to make electrons blue so I'm going to take all of these little blues and I'm going to put them over here the next one I'm going to have is going to be called a proton right these sound like little um power rangers not power rangers pokemons we're going to have protons. The next one we're going to have is a neutron. And I'm going to put the neutron over here. That's going to be yellow. OK, so I've made a little key here of three different colors, colored particles. OK, we're going to call them particles. Particles are small little bits that we find in things. Right. So here what we're going to have now is we're going to lay them out on our um, drawing of an atom. OK, so neutrons are found in the center. So I'm going to pick four neutrons. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven all, um, all together. But I'm going to pick four. So we're going to put them on top of these circles. We've got one. We've got two. We've got three. And we've got a fourth one. Like that. Now I'm going to pick some protons. Protons are also found in the center. Now I've only got three circles left that I can fill in because there were seven altogether. So we're going to put one over here. We're going to put another one over here. And we're going to put another one over here. Now I think it's really difficult to see those circles. So I'm going to just draw um, a little circle around each of those. So I'm going to just do that in a second. Hold on a second, guys. Let's do that. So I've outlined the, those so you can see those properly. Um, we have got one, two, three protons on the inside. We have got one, two, three, four um, neutrons on the inside as well. And then we have got one, two, three electrons over here. OK, the electrons are found on the outside. They're whizzing around the atom like this. And this is a popular way of drawing an atom. Now let's draw an atom from a chemistry perspective. What does an atom look like from a chemistry perspective? Now this is how we draw an atom in chemistry. Let's see what the difference is. So we have one, two, three, four electrons. Nope. One, two, three, four neutrons on the inside. So I need to cut out four more neutrons because I've only got one over here. I need four more neutrons to go in here. So let's do that. OK, 
Okay, so I have got three electrons. Now, where do these electrons go? Do they go on this first shell? Or do they go on the second shell? How do we figure out where these electrons go? Well, the first shell can only have up to two electrons. So first shell can only have two electrons. Okay, the second shell can have up to eight. It's not equal, it won't, it won't always be equal to two um, electrons, but up to eight electrons. So we have to put only two electrons on here, and then this one is gonna end up going onto the second one. So this is your first shell over here. Let's write first. This is your second shell over here. Second shell. And first shell. Okay, so we have got first shell, two electrons, second shell up to eight, but we only have one in this particular uh, example, so we can only put one in there, right? But you start off from the inside and you go out. Now, the other thing that we need to note is atoms have a special name for these, the, the, these cluster of particles in the center. So this over here is called a nucleus. And we can call this nucleus as well over here. So we're going to say nucleus. That's not how I spell nucleus, it's a U. Nucleus. Okay, and nucleus is the bit in the center. Now what I want to do is to figure out what type of atom this is. So our periodic table, let me just show you the periodic table. So all of these little atoms over here, all of these elements over here are made up of different atoms, okay? And when we put lots of those same atoms together, it's like having one red brick of Lego with the same little uh, dots at the top and all of them together at the same type will make up one single element, okay? So we wanna figure out which of these elements have I just created the atom of? Ooh. I've mixed them all up. I need to stick these down. So we've got this in the nucleus over here. So I'm going to draw now um, one of these boxes from our periodic table. And we have actually drawn here this element, this atom um, is the element lithium. Okay, now lithium has got um, certain numbers on here. So we can write three over here and we can write seven over here. What do these numbers mean? Well, let's write down first of all what we have over here. So here we've got a couple of things. This here is your symbol, your chemical symbol. So we're gonna write chemical, chemical symbol. And all of these symbols on our periodic table over here are chemical symbols. These are all chemical symbols and you can see lithium over here. Okay, so this is a chemical symbol. Then what we have is these two numbers over here and these numbers are really special. So at the top, we have the atomic number. So here, this is the atomic number. And at the bottom over here, we have got the mass number or the atomic weight. Now there's a couple of things that we need to talk about when it comes to atoms. Okay, number one, electrons are really tiny. They're, they're so, so, so tiny that we often actually have to ignore their weight because, or their mass because the mass is really tiny. But electrons have got a negative charge. So we're gonna put a little negative sign on there, okay? Protons have got positive charge and protons and neutrons are pretty much the same size. So most of the mass of a 
atom is actually a combination of the proton and the neutrons. Now the neutron has got zero charge. It's neutral. Right, now we're gonna come back to our um, atom page over here. And we've kind of created um, a little interactive, um, little interactive map over here of what an atom is. So an atom is a building block of everything around us. We tend to draw, this is like the popular way of drawing an atom. Um, an atom doesn't really work like that in chemistry. We tend to draw them like this because we're interested in electron shells. OK, and we're going to look at this a bit later. So electron shells are really important. We have only a maximum of two electrons on the first shell and we have a maximum of eight on the second. But the second one only gets filled in if the first one is full. So you start from the center and you work your way out. Now, in the center of an atom, the center of an atom is called a nucleus. It contains positive protons and neutral neutrons. The electrons are negative and they're really, really, really tiny. Okay, now let's come to the chemical symbol here. So this is gonna help us explain uh, the mass number and the atomic number. Atomic number is the number of protons that we have. Okay, so this is the equivalent, so let's write over here, it's the equivalent of saying, how many protons do we have? So number of protons, and I've done it red because our protons are red, okay? So it's a number of protons. So in this particular atom, lithium has atoms which have one, two, three protons. All the atoms in lithium have three protons, okay? So here we have a number three. The seven, the seven is the mass number. Now, remember I said electrons mass is really tiny. It's so tiny that we say it's negligible. Negligible means it's so tiny that we can't, we don't even count it in lots of calculations. So when we're saying how much mass does an atom have, okay, we're talking about the relative mass. So in comparison to each other, in comparison to the electrons, electrons have got literally zero, right? Near enough to zero. So this has zero mass. This is neutral. Charge is different. Charges are a bit like magnets, okay? Magnets, remember, north and south pole will attract. So a positive and a negative will attract. This one has no charge. So this is like me. I'm, I'm neutral, right? But if you have two magnets on either side, they're going to they're gonna want to attract each other. So here what we have is mass, negligible, if you say that word, negligible, negligible mass, protons and neutrons have relative one mass. So this here is basically counting how many particles we have in the nucleus. So one, let's, oops, you can't see one of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is where we've got seven over here. That's a bit of easy maths, right guys? We can do that. So we're going to have a look at now applying this concept to the different part, different elements in the periodic table. And we're going to start off with hydrogen. <laughs> 